Welcome to this channel. Uh, you'll be wondering why on earth would somebody want to come up with a topic like this on why you should not have sex among all topics on the earth. Um, it is not by accident you stumbled to this presentation, to this um, video. You are going to be very, very delighted at the end of this video that you actually come and watched it. Um, the video will take the following outline. If we start with introduction, benefits and implications of sex why you should not have sex it is going to introduce to you what is called the sex readiness calculator maybe this may be the first time of hearing something like that and then you're going to know some 12 facts about sex from current literatures the anatomical design of the vagina and the penis that perfectly fit into one another is one of the greatest marvels of creation these are the only organ organs that can fuse the two sexes into a conjoint and equal organism in the process of oneness love pleasure, satisfaction, and procreation. In humans and many animals, the preparation and conduct of sex can lead to fierce competition, injuries, death, and litigation, particularly in humans. I want to give you some two quotes that I just picked that are really very relevant to this topic. One is, love without sex is still the most efficient form of hell known to man. As somebody's impression about sex, the second is sex is one of the most powerful gifts God ever created. It was designed to bring a man and a woman together in a physical, emotional, and spiritual bond that will create pleasure, intimacy, and also procreation. Like we all know, the procreation and survival of the human species depend on sex. Over 99% of the over 8 billion people currently on Earth we are procreated through the act of sex. We are aware of the fact that there is in vitro fertilization, where they, there is the, the, the test to babies and things like that, but this is just very, very insignificant in terms of the ratio of the human population. Sex is one of the most advertised acts in the world, from social media, stories, gossip, to extreme pornography. From family to society levels, sex is secretive, sensational, mythical, are mentioned with caution. It is considered as a symbol and consummation of love. Marriages that sometimes there is no sex in between tends to break quickly, or there is no like it's considered sometimes it breaks quickly. And then because of the way society attached to it and the meat, the meat attached with sex, they use the term love making as an euphemism for sex. Sex like wants is insatiable. While it is easy for the fittest animal to have sex with a willing and unwilling mate without strength, in human it is not so. Humans, though they fight, but the kind of fight that animals make, which is very, very obvious, in human it may not be that obvious, it may be subtle, there are competition for, this, for sex, but it's not that obvious in human, there's subtle way they go about it. Many animals also develop a state of heat during the mating season. This is a time in which women are most receptive to sex, it's a mating season, and um, it's not very obvious in human, though human, women, in the mid-circle, because of the raise in the hormones, the progesterone, the oestrogen, and testosterone, women tend to have higher libido during the time of ovulation, ovulation which is particularly around the mid, uh, middle of, um, of, of the menstrual circle, the mid middle of the menstrual circle, and then um, particularly for those who are having a menstrual circle about 28 days, and the many, uh, but, uh, but the heat, concept of heat is very short in human. That uh, desire to have sex by women, sex initiated by women at that period, is very short and um, very short because human ovulation to sex is just like about just about 24 hours. The sex industry rakes in billions of dollars annually. There are so many drugs people take to enhance their sexual performance, surgery, sex enhancing surgery, and many beauty products that tell lot on how to enhance the act of sex or intimacy or, or how somebody is attracted to, to, to each other. We'll just take some benefits and implications of sex. These are also from many, many literature that we researched before we make this presentation. Uh, one of them is the emotional benefit of sex and then the emotional implication of sex. One of the emotional benefit of sex is that it may boost intimacy, it can increase bonding between couples, confidence, motivation, and then can increase someone's motivation. It reduces depression. It can lead to lifelong partnership and happiness 
are people living together forever. But also it's associated with many emotional implications, particularly when the intention, when, when the expectations are not met by what is actually happening around. It can lead to heartbreaks when there is distrust. It can, and these heartbreaks may not be handled equally. Somebody might end up making somebody to develop mental disorders, depression, nihilism or self-harm, a suicidal ideation, and some may have a completed suicide which can lead to death. With the right person, time may stop in a state of bliss and eternity may intervene. It may speed one's ascent on the social ladder and career in terms of time benefit because if you're able to pick the right target, the right person, you are likely to have, to, you can likely climb very high on the social ladder quickly yeah, because your promotion will be rapid. If you're able to seduce the boss, the, the chief executive officer, the manager or the director, your ascent of social ladder can increase quickly. And then the two time time patients are getting the right and willing partner can be very very time consuming particularly in humans and um, it, no matter how much you try to convince the person the person makes his or her minds up it may, you may waste a lot of time it will be tedious and then you even end up wasting the entire time and then even after that you will still have to spend a lot of time meditating on how you're going to perform the act how to wash your clothes how to clean your home how you're going to travel are you going to talk, what are you going to say, how are you going to appear, appealing and convincing, all those things will come up and they are actually also time consuming. Sex has several uh, health benefits and health implications. I will just go straight, I will start with the health benefits. Like we mentioned before, procreation and several human race depend on sex. Uh, it has been found to reduce mental and cardiovascular diseases. It can decrease prostate cancer and benign prostatic hyperplasia. Because when you are having repeated ejaculation, uh, sex, penetration, ejaculation, penetration, ejaculation, the buildup of secretions and even free radicals that can cause some form of um, to start a, a, a cancerous process might be reduced. So because of that, men who have frequent sex are less likely to have uh, prosthetic cancer. It also decreased heart attacks and anxiety. It can boost immunity. It can decrease depression, I mentioned it before, it can decrease blood pressure, and then sexual performance is also considered by some as a measure of virility and masculinity. While this is said, many of these are not statistically significant, and because they're not medically statistically significant, you cannot recommend somebody that you should uh, have sex so that your mental and cardiovascular diseases will reduce, or you are going to have sex so that you will have uh, reduced type uh, numbers of heart attacks and anxiety, or you have to reduce, uh, 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 commence sex to ensure that your immunity is boosted. It is not statistically significant. So you cannot use sex, recommend sex for some of these benefits. Though these are associated, associated benefits, they cannot actually be proven, women or they can be proven uh, statistically. Um, health implications. Sex uh, is associated with so many sexually transmitted infections. We've heard about gonorrhea, we've heard of syphilis, chancroid, yeah, we've heard of HIV, which is very, very common, particularly in developing countries. And um, these are some of the which we are very common, which, are, which we are very aware of. Although sexually transmitted infection is decreasing, we have now seen, we have currently seen an upsurge in recent, recent time. This is that we even expect that have, have gone down, like gonorrhea, syphilis, they are still coming up now. And HIV is still prevalent, particularly in developing countries, sub-Saharan Africa particularly. Uh, sex can also be associated with a uh, planned and unplanned uh, wanted pregnancy, unplanned, pre unplanned and wanted pregnancies, with the attendant complications, partner mortality, the need for uh, abortions, miscarriages, and all the complications associated with pregnancies and death and so on. And then some women may not find the use of contraceptives very appealing. For this kind of women, sex may not be very appealing for such kind of persons because of the complications, hormonal contraceptives, the surgery for vasectomy, the surgery for bilateral tubal ligation, and all the um, surgeries and drugs that are taken to prevent pregnancies may not be very appealing for some because of the complications associated with them. Um, in the family life benefit, that's the family life benefit because if couples who are able to stay together, born together, have sex together, are more likely to stay together and then um, you can increase cohesion and more family cohesion. But outside the spousal relationship, the demerits that can cause a lot of heartbreaks, distrust, and can even lead to divorce. It can help someone's career. It can also have a lot of career implications. Like I've mentioned before, if you're able to seduce the chief executive officer 
or the director or a governor or a president of organization or the leader of organization, the director, the chief of party or or anybody in leadership or a billionaire or a millionaire. It will be able to help you in your career growth quickly. You can be promoted quickly. You can be given money. You can be given raises. You can give in unmerited favor. And all this can help your career ascent. Those are the complicated the implications. So the implications that can ruin your career. In most stories or most evidences that are available, the destruction of career, ruin of your career is more likely to occur than a career growth when you mix sex with your career. So most people recommend that you should try by almost not to mix sex with your career. At the financial benefits, it may cost nothing and then maybe what the cost. It can make you a billionaire, like I've mentioned. If you're able to seduce a billionaire and marry a billionaire, you seduce a millionaire, marry a billionaire, a millionaire, or marry a very rich person, or a person in position, can put in position to give you maybe an oil well or a gold mine or things like that, or an industry, or all those things. If you're able to seduce such a person, he leaves such a things for you. It can help very much in your career good and it can make you a, benefit, a billionaire quickly. But it also has implications which is more common than the benefits. You can lose the business opportunity, the quest of trying to seduce somebody. You are going to lose so much, you are going to spend so much. They spend expenditure, you have multiple expenditure. You are going to take care of the health of the person, you are going to take care of um, the buying of the drinks, the hiring of a hotel, the buying of the clothes for the person, the dating, all the expenditure associated with dating, traveling, and all those things. You are going to, you may bear the cost. So because of that, may have a financial, benefit, a financial implications. And these implications are more likely to occur than the benefits. What are some of the legal implications and legal benefits of sex? Generally, if it's a consensual sex, you may not have any legal implications. And then, but when it is a non-consensual sex, or when it is an act of rape, assault, abuse, harassment, these have different legal implications and jail terms, if discovered. And this can, you be, even... You can be, can be having little legal implication can take place immediately or even decades or years after. This applies for people like celebrities, star politicians, and um, very popular persons. Because of that, you have to be sure that when you are going to the act of sex, the legal implications are all well covered. What are some of the reputational benefits and uh, implications? The reputational benefit goes along with power, benefits, and power implications. The reputational benefits um, occur when, like, it can make you an alpha male or an alpha female. Because if you're able to seduce a boyfriend, particularly in the younger generation, the, the, the universities and the schools, for a boy to be able to pull a very beautiful girl, for a, a, a beautiful girl to pull, pull a very rich and wealthy, a very wealthy boy, wealthy man, is shown that the person has something he or he, him or her that is so attractive as to make him or her to, to be able to pull such a lady, such a, such a guy. And because of that, people are going to envy you in your, in your campus, in your classes, in your school, in your church, in the, in the society, in the street, in the market. They're going to envy you. Though it's not going to add anything to you financially. And it can make you a brand ambassador if you're into sex industry. You are doing things that pertain to sex can make you a brand ambassador. What are some of the reputational implications? The reputational implications, there's a high chance of blackmail. If there's a power gap or there's a reputational gap, they can ruin your reputation and good name if not well managed. With a power gap and a reputational gap, the person on the lower social ladder will be considered vulnerable, and the person on the upper social ladder will be considered a villain. The law will likely favor the person, the society and the law will likely favor the person on the lower social ladder. And because of that, when there's a power gap or a reputational gap, the person at the higher Power, uh, uh, power echelon, the power, power ladder, or the person at the higher reputational status is more likely to lose than the person at the lower reputational status. Even if nothing happens, the press will blow it up in such a way that it can even affect uh, your marketing, your branding, and many other things. There's religious benefits and religious implications. The religious benefits can be indifference. It may be part of a, of a religious rite, a rite or passage of a religion a right of passage of a culture or some sex. They may have sex as part of their right of, of, of passages and things like that. Um, then the implications, it may conflict with your faith. If you're someone who is religious, most religions frown against sex outside marriage, but within the mar marriage it may be acceptable. And uh, it can lead, if you are discovered, it can even lead to persecution. And you can be ostracized from your places of worship 
or your sect or your organization or whatever you hold so dear, no matter what, whichever society, whichever sect, the moderation with sex is highly encouraged. And when that is broken, most religious organizations will definitely frown at you. What are the general prospects and outlook of sexual intercourse between couples? The process looks very good generally. In over 95, 99% of cases, there will be nothing happen, nothing will happen. But a very few percentage, something can happen and can be so devastating. So now go straight to what is called the sex readiness calculator. This is the first time you are going to listen to this because it just came out and it's well researched and it's well processed and I'm going to learn so much from this. So let us go. Uh, the sex readiness calculator checklist has the following parameters. has a, a company that when you answer yes to any of the questions or any of the parameters, it is zero. The score is zero. And when you answer no, the score can range between one to three. And then it has a total score of 25. And then, um, so let's go. Um, the first thing you are going to, the first question you are going to answer before you go into the act of sex is that must it be sex? Is there no alternative to sex? Should we go ahead with this? Is there no that we are bonding or expressing our love rather than sex? This applies particularly for a new partner, a random sexual act. It may not be everybody. For somebody who has something to protect in his or her personality, this question may be very important. Whether they are alternative to sex, you can think about that. And then the next one is, do I love this person? Do I want to marry him or her? If this relationship cannot be ended, if this random sexual act cannot be ended, does this person fit my idea of a spouse? This may not be applicable to some, if it's a paid sex, if, if somebody sleep with a prostitute, male or female prostitute, this may not apply. Or if it's somebody that you are very used to, this may not actually apply. Or if there's a prior agreement before the act, it may not actually apply. If the answer is zero, you don't love the person, there's no, you don't want to marry the person, you don't even know how to end it, then the score is three. But if you can answer this one, then the score is zero. The next one is, am I protected from pregnancy? Am I ready for fatherhood or motherhood? Does abortion matter to me if I become pregnant, if then my contraceptive fails? Am I ovulating? If you are able to answer this zero, these, these questions very well, the score is zero. If you feel that in any of this one is negative, then the score is three. Uh, zero if you are contraceptive, particularly contraceptive, a very good PL index. A contraceptive that works very well, that is very highly protective. The score can be zero for this. Um, and then the next one is that, am I protected from sexually transmitted infections? Is it a safe sex? Um, if you are protected, then it's zero. If you're not protected, it's one. Condoms have been shown to protect against most uh, sexually transmitted infections. But when you think about things like happy simplex infection, um, things like um, chancroid, things like... Um, Human papilloma virus, which is the leading cause of um, vaginal warts and cervical cancer. And um, if you are doing an oral sex, and uh, if you are the receptive partner, uh, the chance of infections are very high. You cannot, pre your condom cannot prevent against all these infections like herpes, uh, simplex infection, because there are already um, labial ulcers and rashes. So, and the test will be touching those areas, so making it difficult for to condom to particularly protect every part of the part is con con contact. And then human papilloma virus because it's a skin to skin, when you skin to skin, skin to skin contact can enhance the transmission because of that, you condom may not uh, actually pre protect against that very well. Then the next one is it what my reputation? If it gets to the public domain, if the newspaper hear about this, if this is if the press get to know about this. You have to be very sure that you are not being recorded. You should understand that some records, some video can record in the dark, in the night. And then if there's a reputational gap, particularly you are on a higher social ladder, you want to have sex with your house girl, you want to have sex with your secretary, you want to have sex with um, somebody who is working with you, you are a boss or you are a star, you are a celebrity or a politician, a high politician, you want to contest in fusion. You have to be very careful of this because it can be picked up and it can be recorded and this can affect you subsequently. So if such happens, you give yourself a score of two. And like I've mentioned, some cameras can record in the dark and they can be very, very small. Does it agree with my faith? For those who have faith, values, and beliefs, if it agrees with your faith, the score is zero. If it doesn't agree, 
the score is two. So society and religion, the, the favors people who don't have sex, they feel that people who don't have sex are more righteous than people who have sex. So that is a, uh, the, some of the popular belief. The next one is that, is it the best mood for the moment? Is it going to be a genital sex, a, a penovaginal sex? Uh, is it going to be an anal sex? Is it going to be an oral sex? Is it going to be same sex? Or any other forms of penetration or contact? If it is somebody that is a known partner with you, this call may be zero. Or if you are very used to that kind of method, this call may be zero. But if it's something you are going to try, you have to be very careful that you are very used or you are ready to, to, to be able to, to, to perform it before you go into it. The score for that is um, um, one. Then the next one, is it what the financial cost or loss of man hour or the financial loss that may come with it? If it is like that, the score is zero. If it is not, the score is one. And then, if you are, however, a prostitute, or you want to seduce your boss, you want to seduce you, someone who has a billionaire, then the score is zero for you. But the billionaire you want to seduce, or your boss that is going to be seduced, the score is one for such a person. Because you, it's like it's a means of livelihood, it's the way you want to chart your career. So because of that, it may not apply to you for this, because it may, may be a means of you getting money and things like that. So because of that, it may not apply to you. Then, is it worth the risk of journey of the journey or timing of this trip? I want to make this journey by in August. I want to make this journey in January. I want to make this journey in December. I want to make this journey in June, July, in a Saturday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Sunday. What if you go and the person changes his mind? What there's accident? What if you go and you even change your mind? What if you go, you run into something you didn't even expect? You run there, you just go and meet your best friend with your your boy, with your man, or with your girl. How are you going to react? How to take all this into consideration? We go ahead. Then the next is that, is it the right place? Does it matter if anyone sees us here? This particularly matters for places when you're having sex in an office. If you think that place is not safe and uh, you can be caught or people can see you, uh, it can matter a lot. In most close society, being seen at all is very dangerous for you. And because of that, you have to be very careful that the place you want to have this sexual affair is actually safe. Even if you think it's the toilet is safe, you know, someone can just bottle the toilet and catch two of you, and it can happen along the way. Then the next is, um, is any of us on drugs? If you are on drugs, alcohol, opiates, uh, different kinds of um, substance abuse or things like that, it can affect you because uh, if that person is on drugs, anything can happen. You have to know that the burden of proof is on you. The matter gets to the court or things like that because if the person on drugs is, is just the onus on you to be able to prove that that person is not on drug before you go ahead because the person and say he doesn't even he or she doesn't even know what is going on at that time so because of that it can affect you so be very careful and then um would anybody be affected if i go on with this sexual act and then even if you are you are not you may be and then will this is going to affect your marriage will your family your father your mother your sister your brothers be happy your friends be happy your colleagues your boss people you work with be happy if they discover that you are going to have friends you are going to uh that people are going out together having sex if you understand no matter how secretive you are about it the walls have ears and it can be caught so if you know that your career or family issues are raised you have to be very careful about that too then the next is that um uh you sure you're not breaking any form of law there are no litigation penalty by potential litigation in this case am i having sex with a minor is it a consensual sex is the person having sex are able to give a, cons a consent at that time? Is that person a psychiatric disorder? You have to prove that. Nobody's going to prove that for you. The, the child is not expected to prove that she or she is 18 years or 20 years or 30 years for you or 16 years for you. It is for you to prove that that, sex, that child is at the age of maturity to make that decision. Then the next one is that, am I sure this is not a trap? You can be blackmailed. Someone can be sent to seduce you, to have sex with you. If you have a political rival, you're a, politi a political rival or a business rival, or even during the, the war, you can use women and men as spies. And they can just come in like that and then come as spies. They can put it on social media that they're looking for sex and things like that. You can invite them. You can just reveal the pro 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 presence of the, the, the position of the armies, the position of weapons and things that can be recorded and then this can be synchronized and people can locate where you are. 
Many secrets can be taken from your cupboard, from your room, from your places, anywhere, anywhere yeah, because of the act of sex. You have to be very, very sure of that. And then for those who are religious, you may even think whether it is a demonic manipulation, a satanic manipulation, because when the problem comes, that's when you're going to begin to think about that. So you have to be very sure of that too. Like I've mentioned, it's a total score of, of, of um, 25. So let's go straight now to the interpretation. If the above score is zero, the chance of mistakes are minimal. The score is more of a guide and not exhaustive, so you can add, remove, or modify to suit your own particular case. So, but if the score is zero, the chances of a problem are very, very minimal. Though this is not a recommendation, but you have to just use it as a guide to you. If the score is between one and five, or if it involves most of the non, most of the remedial factors, something I can easily correct the score. You may be able to make the adjustment, make the corrections quickly, uh, before you can go ahead. But if the score is greater than 5, or it involves something that is non-remedial, non-remedial is that something that no matter, you cannot correct it. You have to be sure that it is not J. This is a yes or no. If there is a yes, then you cannot go ahead, except you have to clear it. And this involves things like, if it involves, you don't love the person, you can be trapped into, trapped into a marriage that you don't like, you can be trapped into a pregnancy, pregnancy you don't like, and it's going to affect the person. If it doesn't affect, it's going to affect the person. And then if there is a potential litigation, particularly, very careful, don't go ahead. You may not be willing to go ahead. And if your family life may be at stake, you'll be very careful about it. And if your reputation is at stake, you're very careful about it. Or your career is at stake, you're very careful about it. If you are in this category, the third category of this major uh, risk, I would recommend that you may not have the sex. But you are at your liberty to make your choice to take the risk to go ahead. You may or may not be caught. But if it comes on, we are going to have to regret it dearly. We'll now go straight to some of the 12 facts that are about sex from current literatures. The first is that uh, the average sexual intercourse is about f uh, 54 in a year. That's about once in every week. They may be higher, may be lower. Those who are younger may be higher for them. Those who are older may be less for them. And then sexual intercourse lasts an average of 5 minutes with an average of 33 seconds. To 44 minutes using penetration as the beginning and ejaculation as the end point. Because humans can get pregnant about once in a year or two with only one sexual with one sexual partner, one sexual act, over 99% of sexual intercourse in humans is for pleasure and less than one percent for procreation, including those on contraceptives, the infertile and postmenopausal um, women, particularly. The latency or refraction between ejaculation, that is the ability for a man to get another erection after a sexual act, can vary between seconds to over 24 hours or even longer for some men. The concept of refraction is very minimal in women. Compared to the last centuries or last decades, people are having less sex and less marriage and less numbers of children. In fact, the world population is decreasing, although that does not apply to regions like Sub-Saharan Africa and things like that, where the population appears to be increasing. But most part of the world, the demography favors that of population reduction, population decreasing, and it's, it's, it's being sustained. Then only about 61% of adult males and 51% had sex in the previous year. That means about 39% uh, of men or 49% of women do not have sex for over a year now. And then in most countries, sexual activity is initiated by male. Men are more likely to exaggerate that the, the number of sexual partners they have, uh, then women are less likely to, women are more likely to underreport on the number of sexual partners they have because of the societal pressure on them, because they are expected to behave, to be good, not to have sex, to be well kept. And then sex between couples is higher than singles, but the gap is shrinking. And similarly, Full-time workers have less sex than part-time workers. The mean energy that is expended in a sexual act per minute is 4 kilocalories per man for men and about 3 kilocalories for women. So it can be very, very energy demanding. And that's why you have some people having problems uh, during sexual, uh, um, the act of sex. But most cases, it is what the distance. So this is just average, just, just like an average. Then over 40 million prostitutes globally are any they are living on sex, and of this, about 80% of them are, are female, and about 20% or less are male. Sexual offense reporting is increasing. Women are becoming and reporting more, more sexual harassment, sexual abuse than before, um, and then, so it is not it's not business as usual. 
currently the sexual reportings appear to be increasing. And then of the ones that I reported, out of 100 people that I reported, about 6% of them may be false accusation, which means that if 100 people are going to jail for sexual offenses, about 6% of them or 6 of them will be going to jail for what they do not know about. That can be substantially extend to about 10,000, 3,000, 100,000, could have a large number of persons. Then attraction to the opposite sex are so strong that men and women spend an average of about one year of their lifetime for men and half year of their lifetime for women staring admiringly, uh, romantically on the, on the opposite sex. Uh, that is an average of about 43 minutes per day for men and 20 minutes per day for women or an average of about 11 women per day for men and about six women, six men per day for men. Um, I want to thank you so much. This is um, what we have for you today. I want you to subscribe. I want you to like uh, this. And then um, I want to see you subsequent video. Thank you so much.